Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page eight. We're going to wrap up the book today. So I've got a couple of things. Let me set aside my designer paper. We're going to have two diagonal flaps, and you're going to start with five and a half by eight. So this is five and a half by eight inches tall. You're going to score a half inch. And then you're going to come over. Once you tuck in your um, your hinge, you're going to come over to three inches, and then you're going to cut from three inches to five, and that's your diagonal. So you're going to do that, and then once you do, once you cut this piece, you've got this piece. Come over three inches and score straight down, or flip it over and score straight, straight down. So there you go. Does that make sense? So actually. Um, when you cut this off, let me do. Let me rephrase that. When she cut this piece off, you're going to have some excess here. So come over um, three and a half inches and trim. Then score that half inch. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, we're, these are going to get installed left and right. <clears throat> I misplaced my tool. I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, let me make sure I've got this. Yeah, so this is the left and this is the right. Okay, so these should meet in the middle. Okay, now I'll talk to you a little bit about why I decided on this design. So after looking at the image, we've got these three images, and I I, I thought it would look uh, interesting if we did a diagonal because we've got one character here and two over here. Now you could also have done just a straight line down the center, but we've got so many of those flaps in the book already, I thought this would be a little bit more interesting. Now, in addition to this, I've created <clears throat> this piece. So instead of having a rectangular cut apart um, that lays over the flap for the magnet, I've got um, this circular. So this is one of the cut aparts from the A4 um, collection pack. And I, I need to think about that a little more. That's an awful lot of brown. So I might want to make a larger circle um, that has some gray in it. So I'll give that some thought before we lay it down, but we d definitely need something to extend the flaps over so that we have a place to house the magnet. So this is page eight. So this is the spine and this will be the outside. So I think I wanna place my magnets here so it opens toward the outside. So that means we can go ahead and install this right now. <clears throat> because it will not have a magnet. It's already been inked and I'm using mahogany, as usual. <clears throat> this is the image that I used, uh, or this is the uh, paper that I used on the cover of the album from the 12 by 12, which has that bunny on it, which I think is so stinking cute. <clears throat> Okay, and we can also decorate the inside because there's no magnets here. This is from the A4. <clears throat> Thank you. 
think I was going to do this. <clears throat> Mostly because, well, let me see. So I cut out some four by fours to kind of look at where, what I would do with um, photos on the diagonal. So you've got, well, actually these are three and a half by three and a half. You've got room for two three and a half by three and a halfs, and then the page will still close um, without interference. <clears throat> Is that right? It will, but it kind of closes like this um, because this sticks out just slightly. So the other option is to do uh, three and a half. Let me see. A little bit larger one and then put some embellishment down here. So I, I oftentimes try to test it out to see how I will... Um, lay out my photos. So one of the reasons I just did this right now was to see if I like this pattern or this pattern. <clears throat> Which pattern I like. Oh, well, I guess I can't do this side because the way I cut the paper, I can't turn it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can't because I didn't follow the, I didn't pay attention to the pattern orientation on this side. So I can't use this, but I was kind of curious. Do I like that better? Well, I do, but alas, I've cut the paper upside down. So, so if you do use a pattern paper and if you're like me and you like to go back and forth and make a decision when you're actually getting ready to glue it down, make sure you cut it so that it's right side up and you have the option. I thought it might just be too much brown. I think that's why I opted for the reverse side. That's my puppy dog. She thinks it's her time. She's really not a puppy. She's four years old. <clears throat> We got a lot of rain last night. So last night here at our house, it says we got 1.1 inches, but I think we got more. Our pool is so full that it's overflowing. That's that's very rare. So there we go. Okay, now comes the magnet planning process. And so I really do want to think about this for a few minutes. Make sure this is what I really want. This is something else I fussy cut and I thought it was stinking cute. But I think it's going to go on the inside. Yeah, because it doesn't really work here. But I think I'm going to put this guy down here in the corner. It's just so cute. Let's do that before I mislay it. And it was just fussy cut from scrap I had. I didn't, I didn't set it aside early. It just wound up being something I had left when I was looking for my circles. Oh, I should have left that open-ended. I should have only glued this so you could put a photo behind it. Okay, let me have a minute to come up with maybe something that's uh, not quite so brown here. Be back in a minute. Okay, everyone, I'm back and I found something and this is actually on one of the cut apart sheets. Um, I'm hemming and hawing because I can't remember which one I took it from. Um, I, I think it's from the A4. There's a sheet of detailed cut aparts. They're not tags. And that's where I got this. And I thought it looked really pretty. So I went ahead and put it on black cardstock while I was offline. And then I've talked about this before, but um, this is a technique I use to get a good border around um, irregular shapes, or even it could just even be a circle. Um, so what I do is I take this pattern and I glue it directly onto some cardstock. Then I lay the cardstock on this foam and I outline the image itself as close to the edge as I can get. And then it leaves a slight embossed edge that you can follow. If you hold it right in the light, you can follow that and have a very consistent border. So that's just um, 
just a tip. I, I can't remember when it came to me, but it's been a while now. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much easier. So hopefully you'll find that to be the case as well. Okay, so I do need to add this real quick because we want to figure out the placement of this. So there's a magnet behind this. We need to locate the other magnet over here. So I'm just going to shuffle it and it needs to be far enough over that the magnet's got enough space that I can cover it completely with the designer paper and not have to worry about it. And it looks like that's about right. Okay, so this little notch here and down here is all gonna be covered with, I was gonna say glass, I don't know where that came from, glue. Um, and then we'll locate the second, I've already put the first magnets behind the black. So then we can locate the second one. I think this turned out good. And I like that it's this dark gray. It's much more interesting than um, the one that was just all that brown. It was too much brown. Okay, this looks like about it. Let me get my tips so they don't snag on anything. And I put cardstock behind it because these edges are going to be handled. I think that's right. I want to make sure I'm not blocking my my little bunny here. That looks good. Slight shift. There we go. Press all that into place. Okay, now we're ready to put some tape on the back of that and locate it on locate it on the other page. Yay! You guys, we're coming to the end. I'm pretty happy with this. I, I think it's kind of cool, different. Um, if you like fussy cutting, uh, Chow Bell is the collections for you. They always have so many things that you can fussy cut. Um, I mean, you could make some really beautiful layered cards. I'm kind of in the uh, build albums as fast as I can mode, but like I said, this these collections are just perfect for beautiful layered cards. I love that snap. Makes me happy. And I probably should have covered the back of this, but honestly, I forgot. <laughs> and now it's, it's gonna be too hard to do that now. So it is what it is. Whoops. Black is okay. There's plenty of other black here, so. No one will miss it except for you. No one would ever go, oh, you forgot something. <laughs> and if they do, take your book back. <laughs> they don't deserve it. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see how we did. We'll look at the whole thing together. Oh, I think that turned out pretty stinking cute. <laughs> I always have a favorite page, no matter what I do. And I never know when it's gonna come. It just comes together and then I'm like, okay, that's the one. I think this is my favorite page. In my last one, I did that um, that curved page and I, re I almost did another one in this because the, the collection itself, could easily, you know, uh, take a curve in it. Like this would have been a good curve page. And I could have followed the curve of this, um, what I'm sure was supposed to be um, leaded glass um, right here. So I could have just followed that arc and made a curve. So that's another idea for this page. Um, anyways, I think it all turned out very well. I love the bunnies. I saved the 8x8 for the last page because that is the feature on the cover. And I didn't want to show this um, image again right after the first, right after you open the book. I wanted it to be the, the image that you see when you start the book and the image that you're left with at the end. And I, I think it turned out really good. Now, the circles that I had created as an option here, um, I'm going to preserve those. And one of the two of these is going to wind up or maybe even both of them, on the back of the album itself or on the spine. So I am going to use them. Um, I do have um, quite a few leftovers and cut-aparts. 
And then I went ahead and I wanted a unified edge uh, on the front and the back. And I, there's not a lot of the gray. So I wanted to bring the gray into every page. And one of the ways to do that is to have it be the insert that hangs out. So each one of the inserts has a half inch on it. And after completing the project, I have this A4. I could have done a much, I could have done an inch on the front and back and still had enough left over. So I was starting to panic. I was going to run out of gray. So there you go. I may come back and put a second stripe or something. I don't know. Um, there is also a handful of um, partially used um, A4. And oh, here's one. This was some. No, this came from the 12 by 12. More cut aparts here and there uh, throughout the collection. I have these two 8 by 8s, which are card backs and cards. So these didn't really work out for my project. I'm going to preserve these to make cards. And then I think I have two, four, six, seven partial pages. Some are from the 12 by 12, some are from the A4. And there's a few that are actually the 8 by 8s. And then I also still have these cut parts. So these make great card toppers. Uh, and that's all from the A4. So I had several um, images left from the A4 um, and several parts from the 8x8. So you probably could get away with not getting the A4 or doing one 8x8. But if you want to design it like I have, you need two uh, images of each one of the 8x8s. Eight um, just because I like that sym symmetry when you open it up um, where you have a left and a right. And uh, the nice thing about getting two copies is that means you can use each side of the print um, throughout, your, throughout your album. So thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Happy New Year, everybody. We will uh, get back to you soon. I've got two projects in the hopper right now, and i got to double check with Julie on which one's coming up next. But uh, the next time we get together, it'll be a walkthrough for this project.